Hey guys, it's Ryan the Bugman, and I'm coming to you from Bugman headquarters right here in the studio. And today we're going to talk about spiders. Yeah, man, call the fire department. We're burning the house down. Hey, if you don't know who I am, my name is Ryan Bridge. People call me the Bugman. I'm at schools and churches, and libraries and birthday parties, all kinds of cool places. And what I do, I go out and I bring a ton of cool bug fun to you every single day. Today, we're here and we're focusing on spiders. Yeah, everybody loves to hate spiders. And I don't know why they just do. So today, we're going to try and quell some nerves. We're going to try and give you some nice, simple, easy to get facts about spiders that might help you appreciate them at the end of the day. Hopefully. So let's get started, man. All right. First of all, let's understand something. Spiders are coming in a lot of different shapes, sizes, colors, just like all the bugs, all the insects, all shapes, all sizes, all colors. There's a hundred thousand different species of spiders on the planet. One hundred thousand different species. Now, I know everybody freaks out about spiders because they're worried they're going to bite them. Here's the deal. 9,000 species of spiders worldwide can hurt you out of 100,000 types. Now, if you live in an average place like I do here in Pennsylvania, the odds of you ever coming in contact with a spider that is truly able to hurt you is very, very slim, probably even none. But still, people still want to find excuses to hate spiders, and I get that. So don't worry, they're not out there to get you. Look, spiders are important to the ecosystem. Matter of fact, they are the superheroes of the environment. Their job is to, you know, insect control. They're out there, they're predators, man. They're out there looking for bugs and, and insects and fun little things to eat. So they're eating up the stink bugs and they're eating up the centipedes and they're, you know, they're wiping out mosquitoes. They're doing lots of good things that people just generally don't realize spiders are out there to do. That's their job. Their job is not hunting people down. That's not what spiders do. Relax, man. Give spiders a chance. They're way too cool and they're way too important to get, you know, too excited over them, you know, in a, in a bad way. Let's go. Let's all relax and get away from all the negative spider hype that's out there because, again, people want to hate these things. So, so let's try and learn a little bit about them today. All right, so you know they're very important to the ecosystem. They're very important to the environment. And again, we can't outrun them, man. There's 100,000 different species out there. So don't try. Learn to live with them. All right, now, there's spiders out there that are true spiders, and then there's spiders out there that are not true spiders. And then there's some out there that aren't spiders at all. Let me give you an example of a spider that is not a true spider. That would be a tarantula. Tarantulas are not true spiders. And I'll tell you why in a minute. But let's go over, let's go over spiders in general. All right? Spiders, look, you notice she's not hurting me. It's a tarantula for crying out loud, but she's not, she's not hurting me, she's not biting me because that's not their job. It's just a cool bug, not an insect, just a cool bug trying to live another day. And Penelope is amazing. She's awesome. All right, so you get it. Just cool bugs. All right, another one that is not a true spider would be a daddy long leg. All right, the daddy long legs are not spiders at all. They're, they're more like a big mite because they're eight legs and one main body part. Not a spider. And for what it's worth, hang on to yourselves for this one, they're not even venomous. They're not the most venomous animal on the planet. They're not the most venomous thing going around. They're not able to do anything. They're, they're an insect. They're, they're out there. They're an omnivore, man. These things are eating bugs and, and fun little things, but they're also eating, you know, fungi and bacteria and little things that we can barely even see. That's what daddy long legs are doing. They're not even venomous. 
So don't get caught up in the fact that people like to think they're the most venomous animal on the planet. Not true. All right, this is, this is the extent people are taking spiders, even things that aren't spiders. They want to put them in that same category and then they want to blow it all out of proportion. Relax, man. Spiders are way too cool to be that bad. All right, another spider, not so much spider, kind of spider, but not even a spider that is worth noting is the camel spider. Now look, it's not a spider at all but it's also not a scorpion. This is a sulfugid, lives out in dry, arid parts. This one particularly comes from Arizona, and it's it's the camel spider. It's not the thing of horrors that you see on the internet that's three feet long and disembowels camels and all the horrible, big, lying hype that was there. That's, that is total hoax. It's not a true thing. The camel spider is about two and a half to three inches long and is totally harmless, man. You know, they're not, that's the job isn't to go out and hunt down people or disembowel camels. That's just not their job. If it was the job of spiders and bugs and insects to take over the human race, man, they'd have had you at breakfast yesterday. Let's all relax. Let's give spiders the chance they deserve. Cool? All right. Now, let's talk about spiders again. I want to get Penny back into this because she deserves she deserves some love. True spiders. Even though she's not a true spider man, she's close enough. She has eight legs. She has two main body parts. And she has eight amazing eyes. And her eyes are right up on top. She has almost a 360 degree view. She has a little bit of a, a little bit of a blind spot back here, you know what I mean? But they're just amazing. Now, all spiders are venomous. Let's keep that in mind. A whole hundred thousand different species of spiders are venomous. That venom is not to hurt you. That venom is so that they can eat. You know what? Your kid has teeth. And if I'm doing a program someday for your kid, and I worry that he's going to, but he or she are going to bite me, am I allowed to take away their teeth? No. They need to have fangs, they need to have venom, they have to eat. So that's why nature gives them those things. That's just tools they use in order to stay alive one more day because that's, that's their real job. They're out there taking care of the environment, taking care of the ecosystem and keeping all the bugs and insects in check because that's what spiders do. All right, so you get it. All right, now, the other big difference between spiders that are true spiders and spiders that aren't like Penelope are the fangs. Spiders that aren't true spiders have fangs that are vertical. You can't really see hers too well because she's not real big on flaring them up and making a big show out of it. But most true spiders are going to have horizontal fangs. Okay? There's big differences. There's probably some spinneret differences, and I know there's some differences in the lungs and a couple things there, but the noticeable things about spiders that are true spiders versus not true spiders are they going to be the fangs. You can figure those out usually on your own. And if you're if you're messing with a spider close enough to get a good look at his fangs, well, then you probably shouldn't be doing that anyway. So, all right, let's move on, okay? When I'm doing programs, when I'm out there talking to people, when I'm doing events, I get hit up constantly about two particular spiders. And these are the two that seem to scare everybody the most. And the first one is the black widow spider. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna tell you is black widow spiders are everywhere. They're all throughout North, you know, North America. They're here, man. They, I live in Pennsylvania. They're probably in my backyard and I don't even know it. I'm sure they're gonna be in your backyards. And the reason I know that is because I get to go out and do black widow spider removals now and then because I use them in my programs. I like to keep them alive and I use them as program, you know, in, in my programs to educate people. So when I come to somebody's house and I, and I find black widows and I bring them back home, they're not biting me. They're not attacking me. I'm, I'm not popping them in my mouth and playing with them either because they're venomous. They have the ability to harm us. But unless you really go outside of a box and you, and you do something, you know, to try and almost try and get bitten by a black widow spider. Odds are you're never even going to know they're there. They don't want to come in your homes either. Look, when I, I've done lots of, of removals and retrievals and, and I found one in a home one time and that's because they brought it into their home on firewood. It was living in their firewood pile and they brought wood into their home 
And then, but doing so, they brought a black widow spider into the home. They don't want to come in your home. They need the elements. They need the, you know, they need the weather, if you will. Coming in your home, it's way too controlled. They do, they just don't do well when they're in that controlled environment. They like to be outdoors. So don't worry about spiders. You know, don't worry about the black widow spiders coming after you, you know, and hunting you down. Not going to happen. Now, there is also more than one type of, of black widow, if you will. There is also the, the brown widow which is really common out west. And there is the Red Widow, which is not so common down south here in the eastern U.S. And the Red Widow spider, I believe right now, is threatened. But look at the Red Widow spider. That is a gorgeous spider as far as widows go. And yes, guess what, man? They're all venomous. They can all hurt people. But you know what, man? They're just not doing it. Don't get caught up in it. Three people... Three people in the last 15 years have died in the United States due to black widow bites. Three people over a 15, probably now 16, 17 year period have died due to black widow bites. Don't get caught up. It's, it's just another spider. The fact that it's venomous doesn't make, doesn't make it a bad spider. doesn't mean it's trying to hunt you. Relax, man. They've been here forever, and they're still going to be here forever. Long after we're gone, black widow spiders are still going to be roaming around, doing their thing. So, you know, don't get caught up in all that hype, because people love to hate spiders. Now, the other spider that I want to talk about, and this is a big one, this is a doozy, because people love to talk about brown recluse. Let's... Let's lay out some facts, and you got to stay with me on this because I've had people argue with me over this, and I'm trying to lay this to you and make it nice and simple. The first thing I need to tell you is unless you live in the South Central Midwest, here in the United States, South Central Midwest, brown recluse spiders are probably not anywhere near you. And yes, I know, somebody you know, maybe even yourself, maybe a doctor told you you were bitten by one once. Guess what, man? Brown recluse bites have almost the same reaction and the same symptoms as a staph infection. And sometimes people are bitten by spiders and they don't know it. And other times people are bitten by spiders and they absolutely know it. If you could not find the spider, if you did not identify that spider, it probably wasn't a brown recluse. And I get it, man. A doctor told you that a brown recluse bit you. If he's not a spiderologist... I don't think I would necessarily engrave that one into stone because you know what? A lot of brown recluse bites end up being staph infections instead. So don't get caught up in that hype as well. If you don't live in the South Central Midwest, odds are brown recluse are nowhere near you. Now, yes, fact, they can be transported sometimes on lumber shipments and they can be transported in nursery plants. Those two things probably happen somewhat commonly. Here's the catch to it, though. Brown recluse spiders do not do well in low temperatures. If it's below 50 degrees, they're probably dead. If it's anywhere between 45 and 55 degrees, they're not going to do real well. And if that's a prolonged period of time, let's say overnight, for instance, they're probably going to die because of that. They just don't do well in these cooler temperatures, which is why they stay in the south central Midwest. They don't get caught up in the, in the cool temperatures that we have. So we don't have to worry about them. If they're here, they're here very temporarily. They're here by mistake, and they're not here to hurt you. Don't worry about brown recluse spiders. All right, let's move on. I don't want to spend too much time talking. I do want to point something out. The closest thing, though, that you're going to have to a brown recluse spider, the, the lookalike, if you will, because this is why I think, I think people see these and I think they misidentify them. So I want to point this out to you. The closest thing that you're going to get to a brown recluse spider in your home is called a yellow sack spider. Not venomous, not going to hurt you, totally harmless and very common in our homes. Yellow sack spiders are going to be probably up in the corners where your ceiling and your wall meet and they make these cool little silk pouches and, and people find these things and they see the spiders. And yes, if you compare the two, the, they're, they're very close. They look very similar. The yellow sack spider is completely harmless and very, very common in our homes. Let's relax, man. We're not seeing brown recluse like you like to think we are. Okay? Everybody likes to brag about their brown recluse, and it's just not happening as often as we think. The largest 
the largest family of spiders are the jumping spiders. All right, here's a cool picture of a jumping spider. And if you live in Pennsylvania like I do, this is one you can actually see right here in Pennsylvania. It's about the size of your thumbnail. What an amazing jumping spider that is. That is such a cool spider. And you know what? Here's a cool thing. National Geographic did a big study on jumping spiders. And guess what? They found out that jumping spiders won't bite people. They just won't bite you. They're just not hardwired to do that. Now, you know what? If you take one and you pop it in your mouth, it might bite you. So don't do that. But if you just let them walk on you, you can more or less handle them and, and enjoy these things. They're not out there to hurt you. It's a jumping spider. They're cute, man. Look at that face. You can't, you can't argue with that. That is such a cool spider. Now mixed in and in with all the jumping spiders would be the peacock spider. And these hit the internet a while back and they went crazy on the internet because people love the peacock spider. And check it out, man. It's just a cool little jumping spider. And this is the male. And he throws that flap up in the air with that big bright colors on it. And he does a cool dance and it impresses all the girls. And that is how they get girlfriends. That's what it's all about. They're out there taking care of the planet, eating bugs and insects and chasing girls. Not a bad life. And when you got colors like that, that's not a bad thing either too. So the peacock spiders, cute little spiders, but I want to point something out. Dude, they're, they're as small, if not smaller than your, your pinky nail. Tiny, tiny little spiders. Don't get caught up in the big blow up pictures of, of peacock spiders. We're talking a small little spider. Non-venomous in the way that it's not going to hurt you. It's just looking to go out there and, and bite insects and hurt them instead. So don't get caught up in negative spider hype. All right. Now, the other big, big species or the big family of spiders are the orb weaving spiders. All right. And I have a couple examples I want to talk about. The first one is the one you can find right in your garden all summer long is the yellow garden spiders. These are cool, cool spiders. And again, man, they're not hunting you. They're just a spider. They're just out there trying to eat bugs and mind their own business. Check out that big web that this thing hangs in got that big white zipper in it. These are also called zipper spiders because of that. And what that actually is, that's a shock absorber inside that web that when large grasshoppers or large butterflies or insects hit that web, the, the web can flex and move. And that keeps that web from getting trashed right away. And it makes it easier for the spider and gives the spider some more time to get into that web and dig that bug out and eat the bug. Very cool, you know, spiders. That's all they are. And you're going to find them in your gardens very commonly. Don't get too carried away. All right, you're also going to find orb weaver spiders real commonly up around lights. If you have lights around the outside, maybe at your garage or near your windows, um, you're going to notice there's webs all summer long outside those and near those lights and around your windows. That's because those are orb weaver spiders that are building webs that collect the insects that come to those lights at night. They're smart like that, man. They know where to go to get food. You know, that's natural. They're, they, they know how to do that. So they go where the food is and your lights and your windows, those bugs are going to come into there at nighttime and those orb weaver spiders are going to build those webs. Now, if you go out there and you look around during the daytime, usually those webs are gone. That's because either the animals, sometimes birds will collect those webs and use them. Other times the spiders themselves will cut those webs down because after a bunch of insects get hung up in there all night long, it trashes the web. So they cut them away and every day they have to make a brand new web every single day because that's what they do that's all they're doing so orb weaver spiders are awesome look i can show you the largest orb weaver spider in the world comes out of cameroon look at the size of that spider man it's almost the size of my hand what an amazing spider this is the web that this spider can make can be anywhere from 10 to 12 feet wide huge webs. Now that doesn't mean it's collecting birds and fun things like that because it's not that strong. But it's strong enough though that people in Cameroon have been known to go out and collect the spider webs and over long periods of time from this spider right here and from long periods of time they collect enough web that they can actually twist it and they weave it if you will. They can weave it into thread and they've been known to make small little swatches of cloth out of spider silk. And then they give those away as gifts. A lot of times probably in weddings and different things. It's just a, a neat little, but cloth made from spider silk. Yeah, you can't get any better than that. How cool is that, man? 
gotta love that. So let's talk about spider silk, man. Spider silk is amazing stuff, all right? Weird, crazy, amazing stuff. It's an amino acid-based liquid that when it comes in contact with air, it hardens, but it, it hardens just enough that it's still stretchable and pliable. They can still build their webs with it. It stays just sticky enough that insects will still get hung up into it. Amazing stuff. All right, when you get into that strong as steel kind of stuff, there's probably some, that's probably an honest comparison by, you know, you're looking to talk something the size of a spider versus the size of a human. So either way, it's still totally amazing stuff. And sometimes their webs can be done in, in a suspension web, which is what most people see. There's a good picture of a suspension web right there. Typical spider web. Or it can also be done as a carpet on the ground. And one of the spiders, it's really common to do that. We'll bring Penelope out again, give her a little bit of love. Tarantulas will build a carpet on the ground. And it's a, it's a, it's a silk carpet, a web carpet, if you will. And what that does, they can lay in that carpet, and that way anything that comes around them acts just like that suspension web of a regular spider, and they can turn around, they can feel that vibration, they recognize that there's something going on, and if sometimes maybe bugs and insects will even get hung up in that, and that allows them to go over and pick them up and eat them. Amazing creatures spiders are, man. You can't beat that at all. Let's talk about the egg sacs. Because you know what, man? Spiders are already incredible enough. But man, when you talk about spider egg sacs, think about a silk bag filled with a bunch of eggs. And when we get into spider eggs, look, species to species, spiders can lay anywhere from 50 eggs all the way to 2,000 eggs in a spider sack. How crazy is that? That is awesome and amazing at the same time. 50 eggs all the way up to 2,000. Now, it's the bird-eating spiders right there. The bird-eating spiders, yeah, those big guys, that are eat, that, that are laying those kind of 2,000 egg, egg sacs. That is totally amazing, man. The bird-eating tarantulas, some of the largest in the world. All right, now, in order to grow Spiders have to shed their exoskeleton. They basically shed their skin. They molt, if you will. I don't know. Yeah, but they shed their exoskeleton. And the exoskeleton is a hard shell. It's an armor. All right? And I, I use that loosely because it's not hard like armor. But it's hard enough that it keeps all their stuff in place. And they need to break that apart. And they need to pull themselves out of it. And bugs and insects molt or shed their exoskeleton so that they can grow. And spiders do that in some pretty amazing ways. A lot of tarantulas will actually lay on their back and they'll actually lift themselves upside down. They'll lift themselves out of their exoskeleton. Some spiders will, will invert and they'll actually pull themselves upright out of their exoskeleton. And other ones will hang and let gravity pull them out of it, which is really cool. All right, so they have to shed. That's the only way they're gonna grow. You know, that's, that's how a lot of bugs and insects do that. Caterpillars do the same thing. They have to molt that skin or shed off the exoskeletons, if you will, in order to grow. Very simple stuff. Not out there hurting people, just trying to stay another, you know, stay alive one more day. All right, look, spiders are not thinking and thought provoking. They're not poetry writing. All right, they are reacting and they are adapting every single minute. I can give an example. Again, Let's use Penelope. This is pretty easy. She's in her container. She's nice. She's comfortable. Everything's cool. I'm going to pick her up. And you know what? She's going to react. And now she's going to adapt. And there you go. That's what it is. There's no thought. There's no thinking. She's not, she doesn't know me. She doesn't write. Look, man, it's a 21-year-old spider. Tarantulas can live to be 35 years old. She's 21 now. She doesn't know me. She doesn't recognize me. All she knows is whether or not there's a threat, whether or not there's a reason she should run, whether or not she should curl up and get ready. She just, they react and then they adapt. That's what spiders and insects and bugs are doing every single day. They don't have a thinking and thought, you know, provoking brain like that. So don't give them more credit than they're worth, but at the same time, understand that they are programmed and they are hardwired to do what they do best. And spiders, the job of spiders 
is not to tackle a human race. The job of spiders is to keep the insects in check, man. And that's what they do. They're taking down stink bugs. They're taking down centipedes. They're taking down mosquitoes. They're taking down a lot of the fun things that we really don't like probably equally as much as spiders. That's their job is to keep those insects and keep those bugs in check and to stay alive another day. And if we give them half a chance, that's what they deserve. So relax, man. All right, look, look, you don't, you don't have to like spiders. And I certainly know I can't convince you to love spiders. That's just not going to happen for most of you. But you need to appreciate them. You need to understand that spiders are out there for a real job, a real purpose. Nature has them there. They have their niche, and it, they do a great job of it, man. They've been around for a long time, all right? So relax on all that spider hype. Give spiders half a chance because they are amazing, and they are incredible in their way that they get it done. Guys, you know what? It's all spiders today, and I appreciate you being here, man. All right, look, hit me up on YouTube, you know, you got to go over there, like and subscribe. Let me know you like what you see, because, you know, if you're subscribing, then I know that's the kind of content that you want to see there. You're going to see some cool stuff over there, too, stuff you don't see here. So go over and hit me up on YouTube. Find me there. If you like what you see here every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 a.m. Pacific, then you need to be here. Because this is what I do, guys. I bring a ton of cool bug fun to you. Guys, I'm Ryan Bridge Bug Man. Look, it's an angry, angry world. I want you guys to be well. I want you to be safe. And man, let's all be kind to each other, shall we? A lot of anger out there. Let's all be kind. Folks, I want to thank you. I appreciate you. Have a great day.